Hello everyone, my name is Raging Raptor and I welcome you to a new, well, review. And today it is the iShu 152K. As you are from the EU region, you will notice that this tank was finally put on sale today for around 36 euros. But meanwhile, on the NA server, it was already being sold for around 43 dollars, if I'm not mistaken. And on Asia, it was already sold like two weeks ago. Now, in today's video, I really do want to just point out the things I noticed while playing this tank. I did try to go for the third mark, but eventually I said, you know what, they are too high for me. I wait until they all start to drop down again until, well, today they rose significantly because most CCs were playing them and most CCs are actually pretty decent at the game and it was a very, very small batch. So now I have to wait a little bit longer until the values are truly what they are or what they should B. Well, as you probably seen from the title, it is not the old ice shoe. I am very, 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 very happy to see that Wargaming decided against marketing it as the old ice shoe, because it would simply be false advertisement. Mm, they most likely even knew about that. But yeah, about the normal ISO 152K, I did play 118 games in it, I do have 2500 average damage in it, which I consider to be, well, you know, <coughs> pretty, pretty decent. It could be okay, it could be better, it could be worse, you know. My normal ISO is, as far as I know, a little bit worse with just 2300, but in the last few games I did manage to have a pretty decent average damage on this tank as well. Now, why isn't it the old Aishu? So, this is a list of three different Aishus we can have a look at. On the left side, the Aishu 152K. On the middle, the old Aishu, the good old buddy. And on the right hand, the Aishu 152, how we have it right now. And as you will probably notice, literally, the old Aishu is only different to the current Aishu in penetration. That's it. And shell velocity. Otherwise, it is one copy paste. Okay, also HP. But it's a true copy paste of the current issue. The old issue is exactly the same as the old issue when it comes to gun stats, except for penetration rate. Uh, that's it. That's literally just it. So this is why it is also a little bit, you know, a little bit sketchy from Wargaming to calling the Aishu 152K with the BL-10A. Because they will know that a lot of people will just say, oh yeah, it is a BL-10. This is why I'm going to buy it, you know, because it's the old Aishu. Again, it is not the old Aishu. Wargaming said that the old Aishu was being removed or the old BL-10 was being removed because it was a little bit too strong for its theorem. This is understandable. You can see... The current and the old Aishu did have around 200 dpm more than the now premium tank has. You can see that the old Aishu and the current Aishu have a lot better gunsoft stats, like a lot better, better accuracy, soft stats during movement, have a lot better soft stats during turret traverse, much better elevation angles, much better depression angles, not as good gun traverse angles, they are faster by quite a substantial bit are they faster. They have better turret traverse as well. So yeah, that's basically it. Again, if you think that if you're buying the Aishu 152K, you are going to get the good old Aishu back and Wargaming is a scammer. Again, no, it is a self-standing premium. It is a premium tank which has its own rights. And yeah, I wanna talk about this a little bit more. Because, and here I am a little bit on the fence, you know, uh, the tank is again a premium. It makes a decent chunk of credits. Obviously, it can be a little bit lower because you have a pretty big shell. And this shell can cost a lot when you're missing. It's like 1,600. So if you're missing, well, you know, you have to pay quite a bit for that one. And it can be the difference between making a lot of money or making barely any money, you know. So, as a purely fledged premium, I have to say I don't dislike it. <coughs> Why do I not dislike it? First things first, it is worse in almost every single stat as its current 
counterpart in the tech tree, except for penetration rate and gun traverse angles to the left and to the right. Everything else, it is worse. And honestly speaking, I think that this is once again a pretty good way of selling a premium tank. It should be slightly worse than the Tech Tree counterpart. And I'm glad to see that Wargaming decided to go for it. Again, it has its gimmick of being the old BL10 with its good and great penetration rates. But then again, everything else is worse than the current Tech Tree version. Again, as a premium tank, it is a very well suited premium tank. Not only is it good to, you know, train the crew of the normal ISO branch or of the Object 268 branch, it is also good for grinding or training the crew of the, the Object 268 version 4 branch because they have the exact same amount of crew members. Obviously, this argument may or may not be irrelevant at the end of this year because Wargaming did decide to introduce or are planning on introducing a, um, crew 2.0, which would not yield any crew system as we know it anymore. So, as a purely fledged premium, it is totally all right. However, I do want to say that playstyle-wise, play it's a little bit annoying. Why is it annoying? Look, the biggest issue with the tank is that you simply cannot rely on it. The AP rounds are slow, so it is very hard to sniping for example, a wheelie boy which is darting around on the map. Other issue is, the aim time <coughs> is very, very long. So, it is very annoying to try and hit something on the move, you know, or try to do a little bit boom and zoom, for example. Another big issue is, even though you have better gun traverse angles, if you are traversing your gun, well, your accuracy is going haywire and going abysmally bad. So this is another issue. You have only 5 degrees of gun depression, not 6 degrees. It's another issue. The only real point of this tank is it's a 750 alpha premium. So this can be, like, for, for some people this is so much fun. To have a gun which has 750 alpha, which can potentially ammo rack, I think, everything with one shot. Because it has such a huge caliber and it deal, deals a shite ton of damage. However, in my 118 games, I was only able to Amorak full HP or rough, almost full HP at T95, uh, Type 59, which was around 1270 HP, if I'm not mistaken. So I was a little bit unlucky. Again, I, on the one hand, I really do enjoy the Aisha 152K because it gives you this 750 Alpha gun. But on the other hand, <coughs> I simply can't really enjoy it because the gun is so freaking derpy. It is put on a chassis which is so stupidly annoying to use that um, it saps out most of the joy of playing this tank. And I have to say, I enjoy the old Aishu or the current Aishu, the Tech Tree Aishu, a lot more. Because it has better DPM. It has better aim time by quite a bit. It has better mobility. It has better soft stats. All those things, they add up and they add up and they add up, making the current Tech Tree Aishu just a lot better. Again, which is good. Tech Tree tanks should be better than their premium counterparts. But again, it takes away from my personal play or play fun of the Aishu 152K. And lastly, obviously the argument that, again, Wargaming is kind of trying to tickle uh, the nostalgia um, button of some people. And again, I personally consider this to be a little bit of a dick move. Because it simply, you know, it simply takes away of the credibility a little bit, I think. Um, because I think a lot of people are going in on buying this tank, on thinking, oh yeah, it's the old Aishu, hooray, it's amazing. And obviously a lot of people are saying, wow, Wargaming, you are such mean bastards, you know. You, 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 you literally take away this gun saying it is too overpowered and put it on a premium. And again, it is not the same gun. It is worse, as already mentioned countless times in this video. But on the other hand, I do kind of understand the argument that, again, Wargaming tries to sell on nostalgia, which is, again, a little bit of a dick move in my personal opinion. So I'm now sitting here and having to say, look, if you want to spend $43 or 36 euros 
you have to decide. It's not a must-have premium. It's not OP. It is not broken. It is not strong. It is, in my opinion, a well-balanced premium tank. As it is a slightly worse version of the Tech Tree Premium, a Tech Tree tank with a gimmick. However, again, standpoint 2020 premiums, it's well. Standpoint that it used to be or it's trying to sell on its, um, on its nostalgia value, not so much. But yeah, again, today's video was a little bit riffing around, you know. So I hope you enjoyed. Again, it is just my personal opinion after playing tons of tons of games in this tank and seeing what Wargaming basically did with this tank. Let me know in the comment section below if you enjoyed such takes on premiums. If so, well, that's great because then I'm finally able to do something different than other people. If not, again, just let me know in the comment section below. I'm always happy to know your feedback. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a great day. And as always, thanks so much and good luck on the battlefield, guys. Cheers.